We're on a private ranch in northern Mexico. A culling program has been drawn up to improve the breeding stock here by world-famous whitetail deer expert Dr. James Kroll. So our task is culling three-year-old whitetail bucks of nine points or less. And as soon as we have a buck on the ground, I can take you through the way I use my Robinson deer knife to grallock, that's our British word for field dressing the carcass. Every animal I shoot must be not just fit for the food chain, it must pass my strict criteria of being fit for one of my restaurants. So my version of the grallock utilizes the unique shape of the Robinson deer knife to remove everything necessary to keep all the meat from any contamination from the intestines. And at the same time, we need to be carrying out a thorough examination to check the health of the deer we've taken out of the breeding program. Throughout these films, I want to show you how every feature of this blaze design will help you prepare a restaurant quality carcass, and that starts with bleeding. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Oh, that's it, my neck. Your Robinson key points are work clean, let gravity help you, use anatomy as a guide and let the animal guide you to what you have to do, and use each feature of the blade in its proper way as the design intended. So we got a pair of deer that we culled this morning mm -hmm. and these have been culled about an hour ago yes. as part of your management plan here at Pluma right. Verde. So they're a little bit swollen up but uh, we brought them here by the river where we can get nice and clean. The truck's got direct access and this is what we do in the field. And I think it's really important for people to realize that the sooner you get your deer dealt with, the better it's going to be. Yes, that's been a pet peeve of mine for years. Yeah. Okay, well, first thing is I'm going to give you a pair of gloves. Ah. Yeah. Prevents cross-contamination. Means your wife doesn't hate you when you get home for having gooey under your fingernails. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so first step, oh, always right. lift that front leg. And then I feel here, right, for that notch, where all that little swirl of hair is for me. And then I up, put the knife upwards and I just push and wiggle. And if I wanted to get it in further, the knife will keep going because of the lack right. of guard. Right. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. I really like about and then we reverse it and we unzip right the way down there. Like that. Just like so. And he's bled out into his chest cavity. Yeah. So there's no blood that are really flowing, but that's all right. So I'm now going to just, you can see this deer is muscling up for the rut. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and now this is the important part. So. I'd pull really hard. Here's the, the windpipe, the trachea, and behind it, the oh, yep. esophagus. Yep. And what I do is I squeeze back any goo, like so. I can cut that off like that, you see. Make a little cut in it, like so. And once more, and now that is a done deal. You see how I push, pull it out like that? Yeah. And now we've got no chance of anything going nasty. The first thing I'm going to do, James, is I'm going to hock him and just cut down about three inches. Same on the other side. OK, give the knife a little wash. Keep it clean. If you don't have access to water, I'll often just give it a little wipe on a clean piece of fur just to make sure there's no physical contaminants on it. OK, so the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to stand on his back legs. He's pretty stiff up. Yeah. And that now means I'm completely hands free. And I've yeah. got, this is one of the best tips for doing a deer you can ever have in your life oh, yeah. is standing on the back legs, get the instep of the foot on there, and you've got him upright. You've got to control him. Yeah. So now what we do is we reach down, grab his willy, be really careful with a blown up deer, and you see how the knife, the, the, the angle of the blade there catches around and really assists you in this process. And straight down there. There we are. And now I'm going to ask you to grab that leg and roll it to just that position there. Okay. So now I like to take a straight cut down to his anus like that. And then I'm going to go in above. And what I'm going to do is find that little notch there. Because now the knife goes in. And then the other side, like that. And it goes just straight round. Just check that's all clean all the way round. 
Yep. Now, I'm gonna step on these legs. Again, here's the important bit. When a deer's had an hour and it's warm and he has inflated and it happens oh, yeah. everywhere. It's yeah. easy to do on a deflated deer. Yeah. Here's the secret. Most people, the first stick is when they puncture the gut. Oh, so, yeah. And the secret is to do it right down here. Yeah. I'm gonna limit the distance the knife can go in and I'm gonna shove my fingers in like so. And the gut's gonna wanna come out. So I'm gonna put my finger under the knife tip and unzip. Can you hold his legs vertically for me, please? Sure. This way I can follow the line precisely without puncturing the gut. Well done. <laughs> Not easy. I'm going to make a little cut in the notch of the cartilage here. And that's my guide for where the cut's going to go. When it's all blown up like this, the best thing you can do, take your knife and gonna we're going to vent in. I'm just pushing the air out of a tiny hole which will seal itself up again immediately. And that's that. Everything left in there now is food and corn and natural fodder, etc. Push the knife blade in now and in a lovely clean movement, unzip to join the neck. And now a guideline cut straight down the sternum. You tell me what you think about the condition of this animal, James. He's in great shape. Fine venison. Now, if we swap ends, I will now swap tools. It is a good idea to do a deer with two people, it really is. Yeah, you have that luxury. If you have the luxury. I'm going to lay my knife somewhere where it's very clean, obvious. And I'm now swapping to the chest saw, which will be a folding chest saw. This is actually a fixed early version. But same handle, which gives really good grip. Thank you, sir. The key now is I don't want to puncture under there, OK? So I'm very keen not to. Okay, good. Now I can get. Now I'm in the lungs. There's no danger. So it cuts beautifully on the pull stroke. Lovely. Yeah, I noticed the teeth on it. Perfect for that. It really works well. I've used a lot of saws that just don't cut. Oh, they're horrible. And they're horrid. So we're in a great place now, James. This is. Oh yeah. We're in a happy place. We're, in a happy place. We're on the home straight, so tidy up there. And what I'd like you to do, sir, if you don't mind, is to just lift up 18 inches or so using the handles I've made on the back of his leg. Right. If you're on your own, the same technique works. You just have to move the deer from side to side rather than suspending it vertically. So now I'm going to reach in, push everything out to one side, look, like so. And I'm going to stick my hand as far up his chuffer as I can and pull it all out and flop it straight out the side. And any poo like that that's visible. And you know what, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna change, change my glove because I got goo on it. And we wanna be religious about hygiene. Very much so. Okay, so now what I can do, thank you sir, is I'm gonna start taking the diaphragm here. So I'm gonna clean the animal and cut the diaphragm nice and neatly on that side. I'm gonna bring everything over this way and do the same on this side. Like that. And now, it's, now I'm going to pull everything forward. Like so. Either side, quick cut, quick cut, walk backwards. Et voila. Back in the UK, we do specific inspections for TB and foot and mouth, and we'll cover this in detail in our next set of films. Let's have a look at him. If we lift him up and tip him, we get the blood out now, and then we pull him to a clean piece of gravel. Beautiful. Whew. It is hot work. It is hot work. At 90 degrees. Yeah. But having the right tool, means everything and everything. this is just an extension of my hand it's just right. utterly comfortable i think anyone when they pick one of these up will immediately go oh. it is a good knife <laughs> uh, but our job's not over yet because we did harvest these deer as part of our management program here at Plumber Verde. that we're taking the 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 cull animals the genetically inferior animals out and they can tell us a lot about the condition of this deer herd because we're monitoring the condition of this deer herd all the time because our goal is to have a healthy deer herd so 
we've left the kidneys in. One of the first things we want to look at is the kidneys. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if you let me borrow your knife here, look at this. <laughs> now that is a healthy kidney. What this says is that right now it's October and they, these deer are about six weeks away from the breeding season. And they have to put on a tremendous amount of fat to, to get through the breeding season because he will lose 40% of his body weight. That's a lot, isn't so, it? The more fat he puts in, the better. This is white fat, as you know. And the neat thing about white fat is it has a low melting point. Mm -hmm. The bad thing about white fat and a low melting point is he, he will use it up in a month. Okay. But that is management. That is good management. This deer is in great physical condition. He's got a good store of fat. You can also see fat inside the body cavity. I bet you when you skin him, he's got rump fat. Yep. So this guy's gonna make it. He's gonna do a great job. But there's more to learn. Uh, from the, the pluck. that's over there. Oh. Well, first of all, this, this deer was a heart shot, and it's important for us to give these animals a quick and humane death. And this animal, I guarantee you, uh, I never knew what hit him. Top of the heart. Yeah, top of the heart, beautiful shot. That's the bullet impact there. Yeah. Okay, now, now let's look at something else. We're gonna, we'll clean, this is the liver. The liver is the cesspool of the body. And what we want to look at here is the surface of this liver. First of all, we look at the color and texture. Yep. If it's got uh, parasites like liver flukes, there'll be big pustules here. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot. So what we'll do is we'll come in and just make about half inch to one inch sections through the liver. And we're looking for tapeworm cysts, liver flukes, those sorts of things. Maybe some infection. That looks good to me. Oh, this liver. <laughs> and, and you know what's neat about this, Mike? Is when you get through, Keep it's already sliced so you can fry it. perfect for the frying pan. For me, this is a very important piece of meat as a restaurateur. I like yeah. to use the offal. Yeah. So in the Middle Ages, the roe deer in England and Europe, very prolific deer, yeah. the liver of that animal was called king's liver. Yeah. And it was the treat of royalty and nobility because yeah. that's yeah. how good it was. Yeah. Um, and, and the liver is also a storage place for animal starch glycogen. And as, as a matter of fact, the Native Americans would eat the liver raw. Yeah. And I've tried it. And it's sweet. It has a sweet taste to it, believe it or not. So that's how to correctly grallock using my own technique. Now, it's very important to chill the carcass to 2 degrees centigrade, 35 Fahrenheit, as soon as you possibly can. In the next film, we'll move on to taking the head and legs off and skinning.